Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, what is your preferred pro your preferred programming languages and what do you actually use in your in the workplace? So let's get into it. I think this is a great question. Not not because it's specifically to specific to me, but I think that this touches on something that I think that we all can admit like, you probably talk to some people who are guilty of this. And that is Hyping, hyping things that are not relevant for work purposes. And I, I see this all the time. Like I see tons and tons of these bloggers and promoters of different languages who talk as if their favorite sweetheart language, the thing that they love most in this world, is the thing that everybody's using, when in reality it's actually not. And I think that we should be honest enough to say that this is a language that I am really excited about. I really like it. But my career and the stuff that I'm actually earning my money from, that might actually be a very different thing. So let's get into that. So first and foremost, I will talk about what I use myself, like when I use for my own personal small time projects or like stuff that I do outside of work just in general. And as you probably can suspect, it's one of, one of my favorite languages is JavaScript, uh, mostly because it's... Uh, it's very flexible. I can do. I can build pretty much whatever I want. And there's a very vast ecosystem of libraries and resources. If you have any questions, or you need something, or need some, if you need access to stuff, it's like the developer experience in JavaScript. If you know the ecosystem, it's very tough in the beginning before you actually know, like what's a good bet and what's a bad bet. In the beginning, it's like absolute chaos. But once you have gotten over the hump, it's absolutely amazing. It's like the world is your oyster. Everything is a play. It's a playground. You just, since you kind of know all of this stuff, you can very quickly get whatever you want. And you also have the luxury of avoiding a lot of the pitfalls that come with being less experienced with JavaScript and that frustration that, that comes with that as well. Apart from that, uh, I'm a big fan of Rust. I actually, it's, I didn't used to be. I, when I first started out, I was actually, I was looking at Go, and I was like, I, I, mean, I still love Go, I still do, but uh, I had a comparison, and I kind of looked at these two, and I, I, at the beginning, I thought that these two languages did this kind of the same thing, and the more I got into it, I thought, all right, Go seems to be a better fit for me. I like it's something that gives me what I want, and then I kind of realized that well. That is true to a point, but I can actually get a lot of the stuff that I'm missing from Node and JavaScript by just using TypeScript. And then I had a deeper look at Rust, and I started realizing that this language, in th I mean, it's still very early stage, but I really do hope and I think, I, I want to believe, I, I don't can't promise you anything, but I want to believe that with continuous development, I have a great, I have great faith in that Mozilla will push this into something great, uh, something useful. Uh, the, that this language can grow into being one of those universal languages because for me personally the most important thing is I, I don't really care at all what's trendy I, I couldn't care less if we can use whatever language that I, I don't really care what I care about is to be empowered to do whatever I want if I can have a single language that does everything that I want regardless of what that is that is going to be my language of choice and that is actually the main reason why I like JavaScript like it because I can do these things I don't care if people like it or if they make fun of me because I like it I, I couldn't give a shit I don't honest to god same thing for with Rust. I see that there is a potential here that this language can be even more universal than JavaScript. I, I'm not willing to say that Rust is good. You know, the WebAssembly discussion, that's a different discussion. But at the very least, Rust is going to allow me to do things that I can't really do with JavaScript. So having these two together and knowing them both in my world would make me the most universal programmer that I can possibly be. And I'm still trying. I, I can't really think of anything that I couldn't build if I had these two and really mastered them. So that's my two, right now, at least personal, like favorite languages to invest time in. I have other favorites like Elixir and like these other languages that I find very interesting. And I mean, Java is always gonna have a special place in my heart because, hey, I started out as a Java developer, PHP as well, Python was, uh, PHP and Python were the first languages that I taught, so I mean, uh, learned when I started out. So I mean, I have a, a, a range of languages that I really like. But for the most part, I work in JavaScript and Rust if I, if I get the choice. So, 
what do I do for in, in for job purposes? So today I work in Scala primarily, almost, well, most of my job go, is, is done in Scala. And then I of course use React and JavaScript and TypeScript and all that stuff because bigger systems have usually a bit of legacy and like a varying degree of things that you need to consider. So that, that's pretty much it. And I'm willing to bet that if you talk to uh, like the different developers who are promoting like their favorite languages, some of them are promoting, like in my world, it's not that often that somebody who speaks like really highly of a language is necessarily using that language in their actual job. So I think that that's a good thing, you know, before you take a more senior developer's advice or a blogger or something like that on the internet, if you, before you listen to them about, okay, what should you invest your time in? Really ask them, you know, ask them what they are working with and ask them what they're actually enjoying in their spare time. I'm a little bit of a special case here because Scala is, although if you were to ask me if you should work with Scala just as a career option, I would say no. I would say that not because Scala is a bad language or, or because there's no opportunities out there, but I will say so because it is a more advanced language in general. I mean, if you compare it to Java, it's a slightly more advanced and it's less spread. Like the, the job, opportunities, job opportunities for something like Java or say C Sharp is a lot higher. I mean, PHP as well. Like there are tons of languages that are a lot more popular than Scala. That doesn't make Scala a bad language. It's just that if you want a, you know, if you want to get your first job and get like a good career starting, Scala may not necessarily be the first, the best first bet. And it's actually, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to work at the company that I work at today because I thought this was kind of curious. It was interesting. I wanted to learn Scala because hey, I already have the. I mean, I know what the common stuff is, and I know what I can go and work with. If you know, if I want to work with Java, I can just spit in the air and go and take pretty much any job or C sharp or PHP, these sorts of, or JavaScript if you want to do front end work. But Scala was like a, a bit of an outstander. It was a bit odd, like it was uh, not odd, but it was very interesting that to find a company that was using it. It's kind of like some people find companies who use say Haskell or things of this nature. There's a bit of a curiosity, if you will. And I found that it was a really, you know, apart from that, it was a great company. So, hey, we have a lot of fun. But for job purposes, Scala may not be the best first choice, but there are, absolutely, there are absolutely jobs out there. So what I want you to take away from this is that for me personally, if I do, if I get to pick whatever language I want, it's going to stand between JavaScript and Rust. Well, t JavaScript, TypeScript, depending on situation, of course. And for job purposes right now, I work in Scala. And although I do that, I would say that uh, if you're looking for a career language to start start with, start with Java. Because uh, when I first started doing Scala development, I had no idea how it worked. Like I couldn't write a single line of Scala. It took me a week or two to actually get like fairly productive in it. And uh, then it took, I mean, it took a year to just get to a point where I can write Scala pretty much as well as I can write with any language. So it takes, it took me, but like the thing that got me to that point was that I already knew how to do development in other languages, such as say Java. So Java and C Sharp, very good career options if you're looking for that. So hopefully that answers the question. Have a great day.